I don't know exactly when it happened to me, but at some point, I realized that games that the basic consensus considered to be amazing were actually just alright, or in certain cases, absolutely horrible. Oh yeah! And I think it's a unique type of sadness, because you realize two things. First, that you can't enjoy everything, just the sheer fact that not everything is for you. And two, that mediocrity is everywhere and even praised. I'm an old man by any gaming standard, although there are certainly those way more ancient than myself. I'm probably not alone in feeling that the PS2 era of video games was legendary, probably the best ever for its time. I was lucky enough to play most of the classics, and that I grew up in a time where most of my favorite games were actually made for kids or teens, and not adults first. I loved every one I could get my hands on, from tried and true legends like the Jack and Daxter series, Ratchet and Clank, Final Fantasy X, the Kingdom Hearts series, Give me a break, Kyrie. So are you lazy bum. to even movie licensed titles like Harry Potter, Star Wars, and Lord of the Rings. During this era, New and promising massive titles came out each and every year, and even though I haven't mentioned a fraction of my library, and I haven't even touched titles on other consoles or PC, I guess what I'm trying to say is that games that were supposed to be good, in my mind, always were. Chalk it down to that childlike love of gaming or a taste that was still rapidly evolving, but I do believe there was something special about this era. Despite my happy-go-lucky outlook, some things happened in the last few years. Games I had been looking forward to, and which were received with high praise, suddenly turned out to be not optimal. In the past decade or so, and in no particular order, some of these titles include Horizon Zero Dawn, which I thought was mediocre due to a lackluster combat system and boring characters, the Ratchet and Clank series, which has completely forgotten its old edgy charm in favor of Pixar-like vibes, and Spider-Man, which ends up being a forgettable side quest-filled open-world game. This spite, of course, is fantastic web slinging and visuals. These games received 89, 85, and 87 points on Metacritic respectively, all with similar audience ratings, meaning these are universally acclaimed games. And from this, we should be able to assume that as long as you like the genres or source material, that you are sure to love these games. But as you might have guessed, I was not amused, at least not in the long term. They did all have something which made them unique, however. Horizon had dinosaur mechs, Ratchet had amazing visuals, and Spider-Man had… well, Spider-Man. But these are novelties, not inherently amazing game mechanics. And without them, they are more or less reduced to lesser versions of better competitors, in my opinion. If you just absolutely love swinging around New York, I won't come after you, of course. To each their own, after all. I do wish to single out two companies, however which I personally consistently feel deliver games which are highly overrated. And let's begin with the big one, my old friend, Nintendo. Now Nintendo is a company which is close to many a gamer's heart, and for good reason. Throughout the past four decades or more, Nintendo has pumped out games that have become staples in the gaming world. Literally everyone I've heard of Pokemon, Donkey Kong, Mario or Zelda, games and series which have been in the public eye for their entirety and the fans have loved them for all of that time, with perhaps a few exceptions. But the fact that these names are so well known is not just because people love them, it's because Nintendo cannot help itself from pumping out new titles in each series as if Reggie's life depended on it. I seriously don't think it's a stretch to say that almost every year sees a new game with one of these names at least attached to them, as if Nintendo has no original IPs to make. Now please, don't get me wrong, Nintendo does occasionally do the odd thing to innovate, Zelda Breath of the Wild brought a sense of childlike adventure and freedom to the open world genre few other games have in the same way, and their platform games have a sense of quality about them that their competitors have a hard time matching. But here's the truth, Nintendo games are not that good, definitely not 97 out of 100 points good. Breath of the Wild commits so many faults that other games get slaughtered for, yet keeps getting away with them, a Nintendo trade if there ever was one. Breath of the Wild has repetitive monsters, Far Cry-like outposts, no in-game voice acting, bad cinematic voice acting. It seems I'm the only one with a mind of my own. I, the person in question, am fine, regardless of the king's orders. No interesting or charming characters perhaps except for the bird. Unless you think you can prove me wrong. 
a forgettable story, somehow only one regular save game per profile, and of course, and Nintendo fanboys will often claim that they don't care about this, the antiquated graphics. I'm not saying games like Breath of the Wild or Mario Odyssey can't be pretty, they often are, and it's often because of the art direction. But despite a few more polygons and a few modern visual effects, both of these games look like they could have been released on the PS2 or PS3 at the most. And don't get me wrong here, graphics are not everything, but they certainly frame the entire gaming experience. But that doesn't mean every game has to look like God of War, of course. Chains of Echoes looks absolutely amazing despite its simplistic graphics. And the same goes for games like Minecraft with its unique system, and even Nintendo's very own Zelda Wind Waker, which uses cell shading to create a timeless looking game. Older Pokemon games still look good because they understood their art style and did not try to compete with living room type games. But when Nintendo delivers underpowered machines that have no chance of reaching even PS3 level visuals, but charge premium prices and are treated differently than the rest of the gaming genre, I just can't let it go. I mean, all of this also goes for the Pokemon games, whose basic foundations and gameplay philosophy haven't really evolved at all in 30 years, and both look and run just absolutely terrible. The latest Pokemon games are an absolute embarrassment for Nintendo and Game Freak. And yet, despite massive outcry and a decades-long criticism of Pokemon games being the same, even reusing animations and sounds when this is the biggest franchise of all time, the latest Pokemon game sits at a disappointing, yet shockingly high 72 points. But let's look away from the latest games. Pokemon arguably took its first innovation steps with Pokemon Legends Arceus, introducing an open world with a new take on Pokemon battles altogether. But it did so with, again, horrible graphics and performance, no voice acting, and the same goes for every other 3D Pokemon out there. If you like these games, that's great. But if the world's most profitable franchise can't really innovate or create games that in no way pushes the envelope after 30 years, I cannot understand how they can still receive good or even amazing scores. Nintendo's not the only company finding you my eye though, and the other main one is Square Enix. This company, which on the PS2 to such a high degree changed my life and impacted me, and of course on the PS1 as well, completely crushed my spirits with some of their most hyped titles ever in Final Fantasy XV and Kingdom Hearts 3. In my opinion, Final Fantasy XV was a shallow, unfinished, boring and cliché-filled experience with none of the charm, depth, length or RPG goodness of actual good games, and certainly not worthy of 81 goddamn points. But perhaps even worse was Square's next major game, Kingdom Hearts 3 which completely stomped all over the series' amazing PS2 titles, with horrible writing, May your heart be your guiding key. Embarrassing characters. So, Sora, is there a reason you guys are visiting? I'm guessing it's not just for the cheese and olives. Oh yeah! It sounds like somebody forgot. Quack, sorry! I just took my time remembering floaty and imprecise gameplay, and a story which had long since departed from anything relatable or understandable. Have you heard of the ancient Keyblade War? Huh? Of course I have. Long ago, Keyblade wielders waged a war over the ownership of light. Yeah, the Master's favorite story. I genuinely don't think I've played anything as horribly under and overdeveloped at the same time, as even the visuals, which were so good on the PS2, now look so plasticky and artificial. And yet, Kingdom Hearts 3 lands at a more than solid 83 points. Now believe it or not, I'm not an inherent hater of popular games, and I really don't enjoy disliking games a lot of people love. That's kind of the whole reason for this video. I love playing games. I love democracy. I mean, my entire channel revolves around games that I love, despite a critical eye being absolutely needed to keep companies on their toes. I'd love nothing more than to love Breath of the Wild as much as that Cookie Monster guy, but because I see so many faults with it, I just can't. And I can't help but feel like it's unfair to other game developers out there that Nintendo is seemingly held to a completely different standard than them. And that's not to say that it's wrong to love Breath of the Wild or Pokemon games. But it does mean that I wish more people would be just a bit braver, 
and to actually judge every game by their own standards and the same standards, and that even though you love a game, it doesn't automatically mean it's without flaws or that it deserves a rating in the high 80s or high 90s. The pain of not loving beloved games is real, and for me it does two things. It makes me feel like I'm going crazy, as if I'm not seeing something others do. Or the opposite, that I'm seeing way more than other people, and it's frustrating either way, and also admittedly a little sad, since I wish I could approach these titles and see them like they do. And I know it's not that I don't love these genres, because some of my favorite games are specifically RPGs, adventure or platformers. Perhaps in the end I'm just getting old, or maybe I've been a gaming critic for a bit too long, but either way, there's a special pain to genuinely not understanding why certain beloved games are indeed loved, and I hope I'm not alone in feeling that way sometimes. Cheers.